Hey, it's Rick Kettner here. Let's explore three of my favorite insights from Friction by Roger Dooley. This book is all about identifying and eliminating friction from your products and services. Anything that wastes the time, energy, or money of your customers. It's all about figuring out ways to make life easier for your customers when it comes to making use of your products or your services. So if you're an entrepreneur, if you're in product development, if you're in marketing, anything like that, I highly recommend that you pick up a copy of the book, familiarize yourself with this idea of friction so you're in a better position to identify opportunities to eliminate or at least reduce friction from whatever it is that you offer to customers. So with that in mind, let's dive into three of my favorite insights, starting with insight number one, friction is everywhere, but it's often unnoticed. Most products and services have some amount of friction involved in either using them or buying them. Simple things that could be improved or streamlined to make the experience better, to save customers time, effort, or money in the process of using them. But these things aren't always obvious at first glance. We're not always immediately aware of every single opportunity for how we could refine or improve the experience. So one of the key takeaways from the book is this idea that even though friction is everywhere, even though it's all around us, it's not always obvious until, in some cases, somebody comes up with a better solution, a better approach, with less friction, and then suddenly we look back at the old way, the old approach, and it becomes painfully obvious just how much friction was involved in either using, buying, or sharing the product with other people. A perfect example of this would be the taxi industry. And this is one of the examples from the book, is the idea that before Uber, before something like Uber came around, People accepted the way that taxis operated, even though there was a ton of friction within the process. So for example, if you wanted a taxi, often that involved calling for a cab. You had to wait for it to arrive. There was all kinds of uncertainty surrounding this in terms of when they would arrive. If you saw a cab pull up, is it your cab? Is it somebody else's cab? All kinds of uncertainty here when it comes to actually Finally, getting in the cab, you have to communicate your destination. Hopefully, everything is clear. You need to have multiple payment methods ready because maybe they only accept credit card. Maybe they only accept cash. Maybe they normally only accept credit card, but the machine is broken that day. All kinds of things like this create a lot of friction throughout the process. And of course, the same is true on the driver's side. So if you're driving the cab, well, you've got to line up fares, you've got to wait in queues, maybe at hotels or airports, you hope to find enough business throughout the day, you need to manage your payment system, you need to be ready to make change if the customer only has cash, just a ton of friction all across the board. And it's worth noting that this is both in the case of the customer and their perspective, and even somebody as a driver who's potentially been in the industry for a decade or more and has been doing this for a long time, and for whatever reason, the friction is just dealt with. It's put up with. It's a status quo. In some cases, depending on your industry, people might just assume there's a reason why things have to be done the way they're done. But for whatever reason, the point I'm trying to make here is whether you're the customer or whether you're the one operating the business or providing the product or service, it's not always obvious that there is so much friction or it's not always obvious that there are things that you could do to refine the experience and make things better until something better like Uber comes along. And so then Uber arrives, you can book a cab with the app or you can book an Uber, I guess I should say. You can set your destination, you can handle payment, you can track the arrival of your Uber. The entire experience is completely transformed. And suddenly we look back at the old approach and it becomes painfully obvious that there was a lot to be desired as far as how it could be improved. Now, worth noting, something they mentioned in the book, it's often easier for outsiders to identify this kind of friction. Because again, whether you're the customer, whether you're the one providing the product or service, oftentimes we just get in a rhythm. This is how things have always been done. Maybe there's a reason, maybe there isn't a reason, but this is the status quo. This is how things are done. So often it takes an outsider to really look at things with fresh eyes or perhaps to bring experience from another industry where they've already seen examples of how certain things can be done better or different. And a lot of times this just involves talking with customers, especially newer customers who haven't grown accustomed to how things are done, really paying close attention to how they're dealing with your products and services, putting yourselves in their shoes, figuring out exactly what 
aspects of either buying or using whatever it is that you sell could use some serious improvement. Let's move on to insight number two, reduce friction to increase activity or results. Not only does reducing friction immediately make the experience better for customers, but it also makes it more likely that they will engage in it more often. So if you sell a product or a service, it's more likely that they will buy more of it or use it more often, or that other people will engage for the first time. A great quote from the book around this from Jeff Bezos of Amazon, when you reduce friction, make something easy, people do more of it. So in the case of taxis versus Uber, people are more likely to use Uber more often than they would ever use something like taxis. Because if they're any, ever in a situation where they could go 50-50 on whether or not to use a cab, they're much more likely to use Uber because of its convenience, because of the reduced friction involved in that approach versus taxis. And the same is true of all kinds of businesses. Amazon, when it comes to shopping, they do all kinds of things to strip away friction to make it more likely that customers will order from them and order from them more often. So things like fast and free delivery, instant access to product reviews right on the product page so you can make a more informed decision. They have the option when it comes to consumable products like diapers or shampoo or anything like that where you can actually join a subscription to have it automatically delivered to you on a regular and consistent interval. And of course, this eliminates the friction of having to go back and reorder when you run out. So it just makes everything that much easier. They also are famous for their one-click checkout option. They have ordering by voice now with Amazon Alexa. And perhaps the best example from Amazon, at least, is their new Amazon Go stores. I think these are still in beta, but the idea is you can walk into an Amazon Go physical brick and mortar store, you can grab whatever you need, and you just walk out. No waiting in line, no fumbling with payment methods, nothing like that. There's no checkout process at all. You just leave with your purchases and you're done. And this is the kind of thing that once instituted on a big scale will make the old approach look archaic by comparison. The same is true with Google when it comes to search. They make it easier and easier for you to find information or answers by things like offering autocomplete when you start your search query. Oftentimes when you do complete your search query, the very first result provides you with an answer right on page, so you don't even have to click away to an external website. And of course, they give you quick access to Google search by partnering with all the major browsers, all the major smartphone manufacturers. So Google makes it easier and easier for you to use their service, again, not only does this make life easier, but it makes it more likely that you will come back over and over and use their service more frequently. Same is true, one final example, with McDonald's and fast food. They prepare your food faster, they offer things like a drive through option that's been around for a long time, but this, of course, reduces all kinds of friction. You don't have to park your car, you don't have to get out, you don't have to go in, you don't have to wonder whether or not there's a long lineup inside the restaurant itself. You can simply assess the line outside to the drive-through and decide whether or not you wanna buy. And all of this, again, not only makes you happier as a customer, but makes it more likely that you will come back and order from McDonald's more often. More recently, they've even done things like having order kiosks right inside the restaurant, and they allow you to use their mobile app so you can place an order that way as well. All examples of reducing friction to increase activity. So the key takeaway here is that virtually any business can find ways to reduce friction, not only to make customers happier or to make their lives easier, but to also increase the likelihood of them engaging with your products and services more often. There's also an inverse to all of this that's worth mentioning, and this was brought up in the book, is not only can you reduce friction to increase activity, but if customers are engaging in activity that you don't want, then you can add friction to reduce activity. So if you're having too many people, let's say fill out your lead form, they're unqualified, you're getting bombarded with leads, and they're not necessarily worth your time in terms of follow-up, then you can actually add steps. You can add friction to the process to make it less likely that you will have so many requests and make it more likely that the people that are willing to jump through the hoops to complete the process and to go through that extra friction are actually more qualified and arguably more interested in what it is that you have to offer. So you can apply this in many different ways. 
Another just really quick example, if people are selecting one option too much, you can add a second option that has less friction associated with it, and you can actually divert their attention to that option. So many, many ways to apply this. At the end of the day, the really simple way to think about this is, if something is easy, people will do it more. If something is hard, they will do it less. Very simple, yet very profound, and can be applied to all kinds of aspects of business. Let's move on to insight number three. Reducing friction is a scalable way to add value. There are many different ways that businesses and marketers can go about attracting, converting, and satisfying customers. So for example, you can offer special promotions, you can wow customers, you can delight them, you can go way above and beyond expectations to create a really powerful experience. One great example of this is Zappos' very famous 10 hour and 51 minute support call. So of course Zappos is famous for really great customer support and they have this call on record of somebody contacting their support team and being on that call for nearly 11 hours. So these kinds of things happen Oftentimes when it's that extreme, it generates a lot of press, it generates some publicity that in turn attracts more customers to the business. Nothing particularly wrong with any of these strategies, but generally they're not scalable. You can't offer your special discount to everybody. You can't jump on the support call for 11 hours for everybody. Most of these strategies, or at least many of these kinds of strategies, simply don't scale. You can't do them for everyone. But when it comes to reducing friction, it's one of the relatively few things that you can do as a business that scales really well, that immediately enhances the overall value proposition of your business. So if you can find a way to make it easier for customers to buy your product or use your product or share your product with other potential customers, if you can streamline these experiences, if you can save them time, effort, or money in terms of how they engage with your business, these are things that scale to all of your future customers. And in some cases, to your past customers as well, if you're offering something like a mobile app or an online, let's say, SaaS product, and you're making it easier for people to use your product or log into your product or engage with your product in some meaningful way, these kinds of changes scale. And so what's really important about this is you don't have to look for the next huge massive shift. You don't have to think of Uber and think that you need to transform an industry in order for this to be effective. You can look for small incremental changes, things like some of the examples that Google has shifted over the years or Amazon or McDonald's even. You can look for these small little changes and not only will they compound when they slowly add up over time, but because they affect your entire customer base, in some cases all past customers, but at very least all future customers, the impact can be massive even if it's a relatively small change. And so the point here is, this is one of the relatively few things that you can do for your business that has this massive impact. And so when you compare it to so many other things that you could do from special offers to one-off crazy experiences for the odd customer, this is the kind of thing you really seriously wanna consider focusing on in your business. It's worth the time, it's worth the energy, even for small modest improvements because they can have such a massive impact. So those are my three favorite insights from the book. Now there are so much more covered in the book. Three things that I didn't get a chance to cover among many others. Number one, how friction applies to habits or productivity. Number two, how it applies to making better decisions. And number three, how to reduce friction inside a business to make life better for your team and for your employees. So those are three examples of many other things covered in this book. If you're an entrepreneur, if you're a founder, if you're in business, if you're in marketing, if you're in product development, if you overlap with any of those roles, I highly recommend that you pick up a copy of this book so you become more familiar with this concept of friction so you're in a better position to spot opportunities to reduce or eliminate it for customers. That's it for this episode. If you have any questions or comments about anything that we covered here, let me know down in the comment section below. If you're listening to the audio edition, I'll include a link in the show notes so you can go to the video edition and participate in the comment section there. If you're interested in more content like this in the future, I recommend that you subscribe or follow my updates on social media so you don't miss out on future episodes. Thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to connecting with you again in a future episode.